I'd like to thank Knowledge Bolide crew member Ron Metchus for making yet another one of his videos available for the Knowledge Bolide channel. Well, hello again, everybody out there. Ron Metchus here again. Well, I got a nasty surprise while going through my meteorite cabinet last week. I came across an iron meteorite that I had somebody else cut for me right after the uh, February show in Tucson this, this last year. And I, I ran through my electrolysis tank, polished it up, etched it and everything. Thought I'd done a pretty good job on it. However, it's getting rusty. So it didn't do a good enough job. So we got to fix this before it falls apart. So I'm going to run this through my electrolysis tank again. We'll go through all the setup and everything. And uh, hopefully we can salvage this. It can't, well, it can't be any worse than what it is now. So let's, uh, let's get to it here. I'll do a couple close-ups just to give you an idea of what we're starting with. So here's a close-up view to show you what we're dealing with. Take this half here. As you can see, there's quite a bit of rust. And it's working its way into the crystal structure of this piece. Pretty ugly. Now the outside shows no rust at all. So it's just because I had this thing cut, there's probably some moisture or something in there. Anyway, we're going to have to deal with that. The other half looks just as bad. Here it is. It started, if you can see right there, it's piling up on the cut surface. That's never a good thing. I don't know what that means, but I don't like it. So into the tank it goes, and let's hope we can get rid of all that and it stays nice and stable. All right, so let's go through the equipment that we need to build a reverse electrolysis system. So for starters, a non-conductive container uh, this is something I bought for about $2 over at Home Depot. About a foot long. It's about six inches deep. It's plenty big for what I'm using. Now for the anodes, I'm using two graphite plates. Some people use iron, which is just fine. Um, the nice thing about graphite plates is they don't rust. They can last forever. I have some old ones back in the corner that have actually worn out. So I've done this a number of times. They're, they're secured to the side with a couple little C-clamps. Those don't hit the water, so we're good. A little dowel here will be used to suspend the, the meteorite in the water. Now the water that we're going to be using is plain old distilled water. I got this over at Smart and Final for about a dollar or so. Uh, the solution is going to be, the, elect, the electrolytic solution will be made using the spa pH up chemical, uh, potassium carbonate. You can pick this up in any pool store. To clean the meteorite, we're going to be using some acetone because it has a, a spray coating on there. I have to get that off because you have to have conductivity through the meteorite to make a complete circuit. To wrap the meteorite, we're going to be using this iron wire. Don't use anything like that has stainless steel. Just use iron. If you use stainless steel, you'll be ma making small amounts of hexavalent and chromium. Highly carcinogenic. I don't recommend it. Now to power the system up, we have a DC power supply here. It's a laboratory uh, e piece of equipment. Pretty fancy, not cheap, but I'd like to be able to monitor the current. You can adjust the current voltage to suit. However, if you're on a beer budget, you can always take a computer power supply. This is from the old laptop I had. It's capable of 12 volts and 2.5 and amps, which is plenty of power for this system. I put a couple of banana plugs on the end of it just to plug it into the system. This works just fine. So if you want to use this, dandy. You can also use a battery charger, a 12 volt car battery. Anything that produces 12 volts is fine. So that's the system. Uh, the black wire here will be hooked up to the meteorites will be hung from this dowel. It will be wrapped in wire. This, this becomes the cathode. And when you power the system up, Ions travel from negative to positive. So you'll be pulling ions from here over to here, and that will take the rust off the meteorite. So that's how the system works in, in principle. Very oversimplified version. Now before we get down to the business of wrapping the meteorites in iron wire, I'm going to knock off some of this rust that's accumulated just with a piece of 320 grit sandpaper. 
That's the same thing I'll do. I'm just going to give it a quick rub. And just to get off the surface stuff. Of course, it's less going to the tank, but it takes off pretty much all the stuff that's above the surface. You can see it does a pretty nice job, actually. And do the other one. This is the one that has all the buildup on it. You can see it right there. So we'll do that too. Okay, that should be plenty. And takes off almost all the rust, surface stuff, but there's still a lot down inside those crystal structures. And of course, once we're done here, we're going to have to repolish and re etch. So we'll get to that later. So before we get down to wrapping the wire around the meteorite, we have to make sure that we have conductivity through the outside of the rock. So I've got out my old multimeter. I've set it to ohms. And it has a function where it makes a, a tone when you get a short like that. So let's check the outside of these two pieces here. And as you can see, there's no conductivity. Whoops. So we have to clean that off with the acetone. Check the other side. Oh, that side's got conductivity, probably because I sanded it. Oh, well, that one does spots. Okay, so we'll take some acetone, we'll clean off the outside, and we'll try it again. I give these two pieces a pretty good going over with the acetone, so let's check out the continuity. On the front, we have good continuity. That's good. That's good. However, on the reverse side, there are some raised areas that have a little bit of metal showing. And that has continuity there and there. But if I touch on the rest of the rock, there's nothing. And I think that's the patina that's doing that. So that's non-conductive. That's okay. As long as we have a little space on the back and the whole front, we're good to go. So let's get it wrapped. So I've cut off about two feet of iron wire. I'm going to wrap each meteorite individually so that we can do both pieces at the same time in parallel. So I'm not going to show the wrapping, it's rather tedious, so I'll show you the results after we're done and just give you an idea what it looks like. I've gone ahead and wrapped both pieces, now let's check if we have continuity between the meteorite and the wire. And we do. Okay, that piece is good. And that piece is good, so we're good to go. Next step, we put it in the tank. So I think we're all set up here. I've got the two pieces wrapped around a kind of a larger dowel. This had to go a little bit larger than the small one. They're suspended just off the bottom of the tank down there. Now I have the positive of the power supply going to both of the anodes, the negative black wire goes over here to the cathodes, which are the meteorites. So now all we have to do is pour in the water, make the electrolytic solution, and turn the power supply on. So let's get to that. Okay, pouring the water in. Should take a little over, I'm guessing a gallon maybe. Enough to cover the two pieces. Okay. They're completely covered up, so no need for the second bottle here. Just had that just out just in case. Now, let's turn the power supply on. Now notice, we're set at 12 volts. No current is being drawn. So I'm going to pour in the potassium carbonate and watch what happens right here. As soon as I pour it in, I mix it up a little bit. It only takes about an ounce or two. However, no current is flowing. What the heck? <laughs> it should be something flowing. Okay, time out. Okay, did a little bit of quick troubleshooting. I found I had the connector. The black was on the ground, so that didn't work. So now we're flowing about 0.95 amps. And mix it up a little bit. It might go up a little bit, but I like to see around 1 amp. So that's pretty close. Let's put a little bit more of this stuff in. All right. That's good. We'll leave it amp in the corner. It goes up fast. Now, what we're going to be seeing are bubbles forming at both the meteorites and each of the graphite plates. So let's take a look at that. A little bit of close-up here. See, we do have bubbles forming at the meteorites. Should be on both sides because we have a plate on both sides. 
and the reaction is also occurring down here at that plate and at that plate. Now keep in mind we're generating oxygen and hydrogen. Both are highly combustible gases, but we're doing such small amounts that you don't need to really worry about it. So now all we have to do is let it cook. That's the whole process in setting up the reverse electrolysis. The meteorites have now been cooking for nine days. So I think it's time to take them out, clean them up, and see what they look like. So first we're going to put them in the ultrasonic cleaner, wash them off, uh, maybe take a little toothbrush to it to get all the graphite off, and take a good close look and see what the status of the rust is. The two meteorite halves are now in the ultrasonic. We're going to let this run for six, seven minutes, and then we'll take them out, dry them off, and have a good close look. All right, it's been about seven minutes. Let's take the pieces out of the ultrasonic and see what they look like. Get this thing out of here. Put them in this little tray here to clean up later. Okay, here they are. So let's rinse them off and clean them a little bit, see what we got. Well, I've cleaned this piece off pretty thoroughly. I used an old toothbrush to get off all the graphite from the back. I kind of scrubbed it off. And it has kind of a rough finish to it now. It had a kind of a smoother texture. It was probably the patina. A lot of that came off. And I think there's material left in the bottom of the, of the water tank. So the front shows no signs of rust. Looking pretty good. The other one is the same. Got the same finish, but there's no sign of rust anywhere. So that's a fairly smooth surface. The back, again, on this side is very rough. Um, but that's probably because the electrolysis took the patina off. Since the two meteorite pieces were sitting in water for the last nine days, it's possible that water may have leached into the fissures and cracks. So in order to leach the water out, I have them soaking in 99.9% .9 isopropyl. Theory is that to remove any water from the interior. Uh, we'll let that sit for a couple of days. So we'll just let it go and come back, dry it off, and start the polishing process. Just out of curiosity, I was wondering how much material came off in the electrolytic bath. So I have it all collected here. I managed to get it out of the bath with a bunch of magnets. And I'm going to weigh it on the scale here. So I'm going to put this little plastic cap here so I can have a surface to start with and take the weight out of it and re-zero. Now let's put all the stuff that came out of the, out of the electrolytic bath. It looks like we have 4.37 grams. So that's what came off of the meteorite during its nine day soak. I'm setting up now to do the polishing process. Now this piece was polished in an earlier video after it was cut, so it has a smooth surface already on both halves. So I don't really need to worry about smoothing it out. So what I'm gonna be doing is using the 320 to get rid of all the black uh, graphite that was deposited, and that'll do it very nicely. I'll move on to 600 grit, 800 grit, and then finally 1500 grit. That'll be plenty to get a, give it a mirror finish. I'm going to start the sanding process with 320 grit paper. Got the first piece, so we're going to take off all that black gunk on there. So let's get to it. Okay, I think we're done with the first half of the meteorite. Let's see what it looks like. So it's looking pretty good. All that black tarnish is off of there. It looks like a fairly clean surface, nice and smooth. Not quite reflective yet, but we'll get there. So let's get on to the next piece. Okay, I think we're done with the second piece. Let's take a look at it and see what it looks like. All right, so here we are. Let's get off all the fuzz. It's looking pretty good. Again, shiny just like the other one. So we got got both pieces now. All the black garbage is off there. And now we'll move on to the next grade, which is 600 grit. All right, moving on to the 600 grit. Let's get started. All right, so we've been at this for a couple of minutes. Let's take a look at the results. See how we're doing. All right, there we are. Let's get more reflective. So they we're making some progress. On to the second piece. All 
All right, so we've been doing this now for a few minutes on the second piece, so let's take a look at it and see what we got. Oh yeah, it's getting nice and shiny, reflective. All right, we're moving on to the 800 grit paper now, so let's get started doing this. I've completed the 800 grit polish on both pieces. They're getting really reflective. Oh, look at that handsome devil. Getting nice and reflective. And we're moving on to the last grit, 1500. Okay, moving on to the final grit now. This is 1500. And this is the final step before we get into the etching process. I finished polishing both pieces. So let's take a look at the results. Here's the first piece. Nice and reflective. So I think we'll call that one a keeper. This one same so I think we're done with 1500 grit. Before we start etching these I want to make sure that the inside of these pieces are dry. So they've been sitting in an alcohol bath for four days now. That should leach out most of the water so I want to heat these up a little bit to get out any any alcohol that's seeped inside and any residual water. So let's start the heat gun, heat these up a little bit. Be a few minutes. Well I've been heating this up now for quite a while. So let's let them cool down. We'll come back and start the etch. I've collected all the equipment I need to do the etching process. For starters, and most important, a big bucket to contain all the fluids. Whatever spills will go into here. Inside here I have a smaller little container. That's where I'll put the etchant. The etchant itself will be ferrochloride. I've had that for quite a while. To apply the etchant, I have this little foam brush. These are really cheap over at any hardware store. To wash off anything I need to remove from the piece, I'm just using distilled water. Now the water will be poured into these little cups over here, just so I have it handy. Now to neutralize the acid, I have a little container of baking soda. It does a nice job. And for personal protection gear, I'll be using some latex gloves. And I'm wearing a a chemical apron so I don't get this all over myself. All right, I do believe we're ready to go. We've got the baking soda for neutralizing the acid. We have six cups of distilled water ready for rinsing. We've got the acid in a little little container there. My acid brush. Let's give it a go. Now this is a really fast process. Oh, look at that. It's already taken an etch. That's coming up very nicely. Oh my. This is always the best part. There, let's rinse that off a little bit. What I like to do is etch it twice. That seems to give it more of a three dimensional effect. There was the first etch. Let's get a second one on there. Yeah, it's coming along. So there's the second edge right there. Okay, let's rinse this one off. And there you go. That's probably as much as I want to take it. That looks pretty neat. Okay, let's get the other one. Etching, it's just coming up. Here's the second one. Touch that one off. There's the first pass. Let's do a second pass here real quick. Oh, 
Okay, I think that's all I want to do. And as usual, I used way too much acid. Rinse this guy off. Another cup of water here. And here's the second pass. Very nicely done. Both together. Both have about the same etch. So yeah, there we are. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now to make sure the acid is neutralized, what I'm going to do is take some of the baking soda and we'll rub it into the face of the pieces I just did. And you'll see some of the water turn brown as well. That's the acid being neutralized. All right. So now we've been neutralized. We have our two pieces that are still nice and etched. I'm going to put these back in the alcohol bath once I dry them off with a rag. Now the acid has to be neutralized as well. So this is kind of the fun part. I pour this baking soda into the acid. It goes crazy. Now when you do this, you're producing carbon dioxide and rust. So we'll let that sit for a bit. Make sure it's all nice and neutralized and we'll wash everything up and that'll be that. Both of the meteorite pieces have been taken out of the alcohol bath. They've been dried with this heat gun and now we're getting ready to apply this protective clear coat that should protect it from any moisture. So let's go ahead and let's move this out of the way and let's go ahead and spray this piece and we'll let it set for a little while we'll do the other one. first piece is nice and dry. Let's go ahead and do the second piece. So here we go. Doesn't take much. Okay, we'll let that dry for a little while. Come back and do the bottoms. All right, now for the finishing touches, we're going to coat the underside, and that will be that. Put this one there. I'm going to do all four sides. Turn it around. The only downside to doing this is that it makes the piece shiny, but can't help that. All right, moving on to the final piece. Get that out of the way, so I'm going to respray it. I'll spray this one, and we are finished. Put all four sides. Well, that is that. That's everything we have to do. Let it dry, and we'll get a close-up of what it looks like now. Here's a close-up of the final results. Now, this was 20 days worth of processing, but I think it was worth the effort. It's just a beautiful, coarse octahedrite pattern. It should stay rust-free because of the coating, but of course, only time will tell. Uh, let's take a look at the other piece here. It's just beautiful. This is really some of the best results I've had in doing this kind of a process. So that's it. We are finished and we'll go on the shelf and we'll hopefully stay this nice looking for the future. Electrolysis is a great way to remove rust from heavily damaged meteorites. The final result speaks for itself. Anyway, it's simple to do and doesn't take a lot of technical expertise. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I had fun making it. So until next time, this is Ron Metzger helping all your space rocks never oxidize. <laughs> Bye.